Welcome back. It's Lewis again, your trainer from Flow Plus. In this module, you'll learn about how Lean was developed, what just-in-time is, and the huge benefits that Lean can provide, and gain a deeper appreciation for why Lean came about. So let's jump in. To truly think in a Lean way, it's important to understand how Lean came about and the history behind it. For this module, I'll provide a history lesson comparing America and Japan. The story of Lean begins with the invention of the car. To set the scene, imagine stepping out of your house to see a car for the first time. It would have been a huge spectacle to see someone traveling without manpower or by horse. Even today, cars are a huge part of people's lives, typically being the second most expensive thing anyone will buy after a house. Back then, cars were made very differently to how they are made today. They were built by craftsmen in their workshops, working as individuals or very small teams. The mechanics that worked there were very highly skilled and made cars on a one-by-one -one bespoke basis. The trouble was, because the cars took so many man hours to build, the car makers didn't benefit from economies of scale and they were very expensive and only available to the rich, costing roughly $1,100, which today equates to nearly $50,000. Customers would be willing to wait a matter of months to have their car produced, followed by additional months of tweaking and adjustments. The positives of craft production the cars were highly bespoke and customizable. The downsides were the long lead times, which is the time between a customer making an order and receiving their car. The quality was unpredictable as each car was made separately. And the cars were extremely expensive and only available to the rich. As craftsmen worked in silos, there was secrecy in the way they worked all working independently to avoid others copying them and learning their knowledge. It soon became clear there must be a better way of producing cars, a leaner, more efficient way. That's when Fred Winslow Taylor, an American mechanical engineer, sought to improve efficiency by first separating planning and production functions, and this allowed the planner to arrange the sourcing of materials and parts and the production worker to focus on assembling the vehicles. He started mapping the sequence of steps and the processes needed to build a car, measuring the time for each task. This scientific management style made huge improvements and he launched a new way of working, mass production. Henry Ford then developed on these ideas and decided to make parts highly interchangeable and easy to assemble. By reducing the complexity of steps and standardising dimensions, he eliminated the craftsmanship and revolutionised mass production. He famously reduced the work cycle times of operators from several hours to several minutes, meaning each operator would complete highly repetitive but efficient operations. Henry Ford was the first person to introduce a moving production line a novel and lean idea. Let's spend a moment to watch a video of what this mass production and moving assembly line looked like. When you're watching the footage, think about what the positives and the downsides of mass production are. At Ford's factory, Taylorism meant dividing automobile production into simple repetitive steps. There would be no need for skilled craftsmen with years of apprenticeship. Men could learn to do any job quickly. A trained wheelwright no longer made each wheel in its entirety. Wheel making was broken down into almost a hundred steps, done by different men at different machines. It was much faster, but workers could still complete only 200 cars a day. So in 1913, Ford introduced his most revolutionary change yet. In those days, each car was built from the frame up on stationary wooden horses. 
The Ford Motor Company filmed a reenactment of how Henry Ford first tried out his new idea. Henry Ford watched it for a while, then he had an inspiration. Instead of moving the men past the cars, why not move the cars past the men? So on one hot August morning, they tried it that way. A husky young fellow put a rope over his shoulder, and Henry Ford called, let's go. And at that very moment, as the workmen began to fasten the parts onto the slowly moving car, the assembly line was born. Remember, Lean is about maximizing customer value by reducing waste by involving people. What aspect of Lean was Henry Ford impacting with this moving production line? He was reducing waste the waste of transport and motion for operators. Instead of having to walk parts to the vehicles, the vehicles would move to the operators. By the 1930s, mass production was in full flow. Thousands of cars were being produced each day, being parked outside the factory, waiting for a customer to order them. Ford's Model T car, were $290, which was a third of the price before, and parts could easily be interchanged and upgraded. This new way of working appeared to be the golden solution to craftsmanship. The new way of working did, however, have some big downsides. Workers felt very alienated, completing inhumane, mind-numbingly dull and repetitive work, leading to union strikes, and an unattractive work environment. A work environment that discouraged teamwork and where people were judged based solely on their output. As operators worked with big machines with piles and piles of stock, quality problems became a big, big problem and more time was being spent on repairing as opposed to getting things first the right time. Because parts were being produced in large batches of hundreds or even thousands, any defects identified in the next process would result in a lot of extra repairing work. An attitude of us versus them, operators versus managers was formed, and knacks and special techniques and improvements were kept secret because individuals were feared that they would lose their job if their secrets were told and their competitive advantage would be lost. Between 1939 and 1945 proved to be the deadliest international conflict in history, the Second World War, taking roughly 70 million lives. After World War II, Japan initially experienced extreme economic difficulty. All the large cities, with exception of Kyoto, the industries and the transport networks were severely damaged and a shortage of food continued for several years. In Japan, customers were different from America and didn't all want the same type of car. This directly opposed Ford's Model T way of doing things, producing only one highly standardised car, famously in any colour as long as it's black. The difference was that in Japan, Farmers wanted vans and trucks. People in cities wanted small cars. And wealthy executives wanted luxury vehicles. Toyota realised that customers wanted a choice of colour for their brand new car. Being able to provide this would increase customer value and give them an edge over their competition. The mass production way of America wouldn't work in Japan. They needed a more flexible way of producing cars that would allow different models and colours of a car to be produced on the same production line. With a lack of stable demand and no access to capital, Toyota was facing bankruptcy. They couldn't afford to have a large stock of cars waiting at the end to be purchased and they needed to produce them only when they'd been ordered. Things were so bad for Toyota that they had to lay off a quarter of their entire workforce. In return, 
They promised all workers a lifetime employment guarantee and a gradual increase in salary based on their time served at Toyota. As operators were now lifetime employees, they were seen as assets as opposed to operational costs and focus was turned on developing their people, involving team members in improvements. Taiichi Ono, an industrial engineer at Toyota, realised that they needed to work in a different, more efficient way that involved their team members. Taiichi Ono is now regarded as the founder of Lean. This new Lean production system flipped the American way of working on its head. Instead of having unordered cars taking up space and depreciating in the parking lot, cars were made at the exact same rate as demand. This new way of working, this new lean way, relied heavily on the discipline of managers as well as operators. The mentality of rework was replaced with a pursuit of quality and operators took pride in what they were doing, keeping their workplace organised, maintaining their equipment and stopping the production line if they found a defect. Each defect was treated with care and operators would problem solve to find and solve the origin of the problem. Lean is now widely adopted across a range of industries, from its roots in automotive to fashion, public services and healthcare. An example of some companies making great strides in their lean journey include Panasonic, Siemens, ASOS, John Deere, Nike and many more. Lean is not just applicable in large organisations, it is equally applicable in small ones, startups, and anything from a family owned car wash to a salmon farm. Once you have an understanding of lean, it will change the way you see things, whether you're at a restaurant or you're waiting at a train station. With the rapid advancements in technology and availability of data, lean has evolved since its inception with new tools being developed to help on your lean journey. New trends, tools and methods such as Six Sigma, Scrum and Agile have introduced lean to a wider audience and demonstrated the true power it can bring. With the next industrial revolution coined Industry 4.0, we are now seeing the further integration of lean and technology and a new wave of robotics and automation. The lean methodology continues to improve and available tools continue to grow and it's really exciting to see where it goes from here. Lean was developed out of necessity. Remember that. It isn't a scientific or theoretical approach that was theorised and then applied. It was a new practical way of working that developed because it had to. Toyota had a lack of money, customers wanted more variety, and they had to find a way of working smarter. You'll find this throughout the course. The lean tools are very practical because they were formed out of necessity. Think of the video of mass production where output was the main performance indicator and operators worked like robots, producing as many as they could. That is not just in time. Just in time is when you produce something only when it is required by the customer or the next process. The benefits of lean are huge and include more customer flexibility and choice, i.e. more value, at lower cost and more efficient to the company. Quality is improved and operators are involved and a continuous improvement culture is developed.